Energy media readers, uh, the Alberta government brought down its uh, budget today, and one of the groups that is watching with keen interest is the Business Council of Alberta, because they are uh, they have put out a document that's, that argues for climate policy as an economic opportunity, and if you are a regular reader, you know that that's something that we have supported editorially. So I'd like to welcome Mike Holden, who's the economist for the group, to the interview. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Now, Mike, uh, this is unusual. We're starting to see a shift in, in Alberta and in the oil and gas industry about how people think about climate policy and the tech frontier uh, controversy uh, revolved around that to uh, some extent. Tell me where your group lands. What do you mean by climate policy as an economic opportunity? Well, first of all, I think that where we were, our starting point with this work is uh, there, there are two things. First of all, there's the fact that in the most recent federal election campaign, the uh, the Liberal Party campaigned uh, in part on this promise to achieve net zero in Canada by 2050. And they have been very adamant in our all of our meetings with various government departments and, and government ministers that this is a significant a cornerstone of, of government policy and that everything we've heard has indicated that the upcoming federal budget is gonna be focused very heavily on this climate issue. And so that is the, policy reality that Alberta is, is living in right now. We have international pressure um, from other countries. You know, there's all sorts of stories about um, organizations, ENGOs, um, activists um, trying to shut down activity in Alberta's oil sands. And then at the same time, we've got this climate, um, the climate goal of reaching net zero emissions by 2050 federally. And if they're going to achieve that, if it's, if it's at all um, a, a viable, policy outcome, we need to have some sort of support from Alberta in order to do it. And now, if I can just jump in here, Mike. Uh, last year in my book, I argued that the oil sands, who produce you know, 80% of the, the oil in, in Alberta, have for some time, and they're very adamant about this, they believe that uh, decarbonizing their production will give them a strategic advantage in Asian markets as China and India and other countries implement carbon pricing and other restrictive climate policies. That seems to be right down the alley, exactly consistent with what your group is advocating. Have I got that right? Yeah, I think that that's a part of it. I think what we want to see ultimately is, given this net zero by 2050 thing, which I talked about, we want to see um, we want to be able to keep producing energy in Alberta and keep producing resources in general in Alberta in that context. So the question then is how can Alberta's energy sector and other resource sectors, how can they contribute to this, to meeting this goal? And so how they do that, there's a whole range of areas, whether it's through um, technological innovation that helps to reduce um, the emissions, whether it's co-generation in specific facility, in specific operations, you know, whether it's um, displacing foreign um, coal-fired power plants with cleaner Canadian or Alberta natural gas. I mean, there are a whole series of options and opportunities that are available. And then there's some other ones which are a little bit further down the road, but offer even more potential. And here I'm thinking about um, things that we can do. So Alberta has, I think, the third largest hydrocarbon reserves in the entire world. And so what could we do with those hydrocarbons that may not involve combusting them? And so there is some work in this area that suggests that um, our, capability, our capacity to produce hydrogen um, out of our hydrocarbons is uh, we're one of the cheapest in the world. And there are plenty of opportunities if we can bend the cost curve down to, um, to um, transition our energy into a, a more sustainable and carbon-free future. I uh, couldn't agree more. And in fact, I'm writing a piece right now about bitumen beyond combustion, the work that's being done out of the Alberta Innovates group. And uh, so couldn't agree more. Uh, now, the third question, Mike, what did you hope to see in today's budget that would support your position? And did you see it? Well, what we hope to see was some sort of action or even dialogue or discussion within the budget document talking about the province seeing climate, addressing climate challenge as a priority. I think in the wake of this tech decision we talked about, there is clearly a need to reconcile the economic with the environmental. And for that to happen, for Alberta to attract investment, we needed some sort of uh, plan or a staked out beginning of a plan from the provincial government to say that yes, we're serious about climate change, we're serious about reducing our carbon footprint, and, uh, and here are the steps we're taking along the way. We didn't prescribe any specific steps. Um, so that's what we were looking for in a nutshell, something, that, something to 
position Alberta to seize the opportunity that comes out of this transition? And the short answer is we really didn't see any of that at all. Well, I'm not surprised. Um, uh, if you read energy media uh, at all or watch our videos, uh, I've been a harsh critic of the uh, Kenny government on this particular point. And uh, I think that what they've done is the bare, absolute bare minimum that they can get away with without provoking uh, pushback from the federal government. And so where do we go from here? Do we hope that next budget it will be a little bit better? Or is there something that the Kenny government can do between now and then to, you know, do the kinds of things policy-wise that you think they do? Well, one of the things we've seen that's been interesting in the last uh, few weeks is that the Kenny government has started to talk more about energy transition. And that was something that we had never heard. There was language we'd never heard come out of the, the premier himself or out of his government before. You know, talking about the fact that hydrocarbons aren't going to be around forever. We're not going to be burning fuel forever. We're transitioning. We need to be a part of this transition. So the, the verbal is starting to show up. Um, I mean, so we're looking for opportunities. I, I think that one of the, in the government's defense, its, it's main priority right now is trying to, um, trying to stimulate broad-based economic growth um, through, through um, broad-based tax measures and through um, expenditure constraint. And so that's been the focus of the government up to this point, and that was, in fact, the focus of this budget. And so once there's, maybe once there's progress on that, we might see some additional action. I think we can't rule out steps being taken in the interim, um, but as it stands right now, it's, we're in a wait-and-see mode. Well, I have to tell you, Mike, that the day that the Premier came out, the, that energy transition uh, crossed, the words crossed his lips. I was, uh, I did a victory lapse on Twitter for the entire day. It was a red letter day for me. Thank you very much for this. We really appreciate it. And I have absolutely no doubt that we're going to be talking to you on a regular basis. Thank you. Sounds great. Thank you.